Okay, we're talking about the multiplication rule of probability in this video. This time we're dealing with the dependent case. So two, event, two events are dependent when um, the occurrence of one event affects the outcome of the next event. So it alters the probability of the next event. Or, for example, the knowledge of one event occurring will change the probability that the other event occurs. So whenever that happens, we're dealing with a dependent scenario. Let's look at this example problem. So it reads, among a batch of 90 laptops produced by HP, three will fail within two years. If two laptops are randomly selected to be purchased, find the probability that both will fail within two years. So first of all, how do I know this is multiplication rule of probability? Well, this phrase right here, if two laptops are randomly selected. Anytime I take more than one item, we're dealing with a multiplication rule. So in this case, I'll have two fractions of basic probability multiplied together in order to get my overall probability. Okay, now from there, um, if I start to think about the problem, I'm going to see what's going to come up. It basically says I'm going to purchase two laptops, right, from the store. And there's a batch of 90. In, in that batch, three of them are going to fail within two years. So basically, there's three out of 90 that aren't any good, right? All right, well, you know, not great because they fail within two years. So I'm going to take these laptops, I'm going to buy them, I'm going to put them in my shopping cart, right? That means they're both in the cart, I'm going to go to the register, I'm going to pay. So when I initially grabbed the first laptop off the shelf and put it in the cart, right, um, there was 90 laptops on the shelf. But when I go back and get another one, there's no longer 90 because one of them's in my cart. I now have 89 laptops only on the shelf. What this means is that the probability is going to necessarily change. It has to change because the total number of laptops available is not the same any longer. So, when we work out the problem, we have to take that into consideration. Before we start the problem, I want to look at the formula just in the abstract sense. So the probability of A and B for the dependent case works out like this. It's going to be the probability that A occurs times the probability that B occurs. That seems natural, but we're going to add a little extra thing here. Given that A has happened or has occurred. So this part is very vital. What this means is that when I go to work out the probability, the first probability I calculate, right, that's just going to be the probability event A occurs. That's just a basic probability that's pretty straightforward, nothing new there. When I come here, though, when I go to work out the probability that the second event occurs, the event B occurs, I have to pretend that A has happened. I have to imagine that it occurred like it was supposed to. So I'm not thinking, well, maybe it didn't occur or maybe it did occur. I'm going to say, no, no, it did occur. It happened. And because it happened, how does that affect B? That's what I have to take into consideration. So remember, when we do this problem, we're going to assume that the first thing turned out the way we said. If we say probability that the thing is red, then we're going to consider over here probability that B occurs given that the thing was red, right? Whatever. If I say probability the first one is defective, then the next one will be probability that B occurs given that the first one was defective. That has to be the way it's done. Okay, so that's very important. Because otherwise, you start getting into this mind game where you say, well, what if it didn't turn out? way it was supposed to in the first step, then things would be different. And then you're going to get into a much more complicated way to calculate the probability. Okay, so let's go ahead now and actually work out this particular problem. So what we'll do is we'll start out by writing the phrase, you know, if two laptops are randomly selected to be purchased, find the probability that both will fail. Both will fail. So I'm going to write that as a probability, right? Probability that both will fail. Okay, so that's my probability statement directly taken from the problem. Then I'm going to say, okay, the fact that I'm selecting two laptops at random it means I'm going to have, remember, two spaces to place probabilities. That two is to be used here, right? It's used to tell me that I have one probability multiplied by another probability. Once I've used that two, it's all used up. It's spent. I won't use it again. So I basically kind of cross that off and think I'm not going to put a two in my fraction somewhere here because of that two. That two is used up once I realize that it tells me I have two spaces for probability. The other rule was to tell me that it was a multiplication rule. Now it's done. I won't use that information again. All right, now what I do have to look at then is what does this first fraction represent? Now I want them both to fail within two years, right? So I, not that I want that, but that's what the probability we're calculating, right? The probability that both laptops would fail within two years. That means I need this fraction to represent the probability that the first laptop will fail. So the first laptop I purchase, I want to know the probability that it fails within that time frame. Well, that's basic probability, so I'm going to look at the number of laptops that will fail within two years, divided by the total number of laptops on the shelf. Well, it says that three. 
three laptops will fail within two years. So when I first go to the shelf, there'll be three laptops that are defective, divided by the total number of laptops, 90 laptops. So the initial probability that I'll get a laptop that will fail is 3 over 90. That's just your basic probability. Here. Now, from there, though, i got to go to the second part of the problem. And here's where things um, change a little bit. And this is where we have to worry about the dependent scenario. Because we're going to say, hey, look, we went to the shelf. The probability that I got a defective laptop was 3 over 90 when I went to the shelf the first time. I picked that laptop up. I put it in my cart. Right? I go back to the shelf, and I realize now the total number of laptops is different. There's only 89 laptops to choose from. That's the first difference. The second thing is, is I'm going to pretend that this actually occurred, that the first laptop that I took off that shelf was defective. And it's sitting in my cart now, right? So when I go back to the shelf, if I'm looking for the probability that I end up with a defective laptop, there's no longer three defective laptops. There'll only be two left because one of them's sitting in my cart. So the chance that I get a defective laptop is now two over 89 total laptops. This is the expression that will solve the problem for us. Once we multiply this out, we're done. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We have 6 divided by that product there. So 6 divided by uh, 90 times 89. And when you're done, you get this probability, 0. 0.000749. Okay, so a rather uh, small probability of this occurring. So there's 90 laptops on the shelf. Only three of them are defective. Uh, the chance that you would buy two of them and get two that are defective is extremely small. 